Hi everyone. Today we'll be speaking about a sense of containment and why this is important for children. This video will be relevant to parents as well as to teachers and anyone else who works with children. In the course of research on nonviolent discipline skills, I came across a study on a sense of containment. I only found one study on this, but I found it such a useful concept. Schneider, Cavell and Hughes, 2003. They looked at children's sense of containment and they were looking specifically at what effect this had on aggressive and coercive behavior. One thing that stood out from the study is that the relationship with the parents was important. Children who had a good warm relationship with their parents were less likely to be aggressive and coercive. The other thing that the study showed, and this is what's of interest in this video, was that the children who had a sense of containment with a parent were less likely to engage in aggressive and coercive behaviors. Now, what is the sense of containment? Schneider, Cavell and Hughes defined a sense of containment as the children's belief in the adult's capacity to impose firm limits and to prevail when there is a conflict in goals. In other words, when what the child wants is different from what the parent wants. So a sense of containment meant things like the child's belief that if I'm doing a wrong thing, my mom or my dad will be able to stop me. And if there's a right thing, something I'm supposed to do, like brush my teeth or wear my seatbelt or go to school, my parents can get me to do that thing. So what the study found was that children who have a sense of containment behave better. Children who didn't have a sense of containment were more likely to engage in aggressive or coercive behavior. Maybe this is something we know unconsciously already, but the study showed it, that basically children seem to behave worse when they think that you don't know how to stop them. Now, an interesting thing about the sense of containment was that it was not a general sense that the child had of containment with adults. They seem to have a specific sense for each adult in their life. So if we think of their significant adults, they might have a sense of containment with mom, but not with dad, or with dad, but not with mom. They may have a sense of containment with one teacher, but not with another. I'm sure we can all relate to that, that sense that you can get away with something with one parent, but not with the other. You had a sense of containment with the one and not with the other. So think about that. Did you have a sense of containment as a child? So although this was only one study and one study can't tell us much, I have found the concept of a sense of containment tremendously useful, and I'm adopting it here to help us understand things better in the Peace Discipline videos. How I'm using the sense of containment is in the sense it was defined in the study, that sense children have that we can stop them if they're doing something wrong, that sense children have that we know how to handle their behavior. If we think about it, we can all relate to this concept. Remember how as students, you behave differently with different teachers. As children, you would have had a sense as to whether a teacher could handle your class or not. I can remember one class when I was in high school where the teacher seemed defeated. He would sit at his desk in the front of the class, barely greet us, and mayhem would erupt and he would just carry on sitting at the desk. I think he'd be drawing a picture or something. It seemed like he was there, but not there. And children would try all sorts of things. They would climb out the window, walk around, and come and knock on the door again and say, sorry, I'm late, sir. And he would say, okay, and they'd come in. He wouldn't even realize that they were in the class, had climbed out the window, and then had come to knock on the door again to make a point, perhaps, that he was not seeing what was going on. That is definitely a scenario where there isn't a sense of containment. That's an extreme example. There are other examples, too, where the teacher was trying quite hard to contain the class, but not managing it, and the class would be all over the place. Children have a sense of containment with teachers who can handle their class. They don't have a sense of containment if they feel that the teacher will not be able to manage their behavior, and in those classes, the behavior is usually a lot worse. Now, if you're a student teacher, you've already found this out. Usually, on your teaching prac as a student teacher, you start out by observing classes. So you observed a class with their experienced teacher and you thought, this is not so bad. They seem like respectful, cooperative children. And then it was your turn to teach the class alone. And once you are alone with the class, they behave differently. 
suddenly these same children who were really good in the experienced teacher's class start doing all sorts of things that you never saw them do before. They disrupt the class in a number of ways. They get out of their seats. They sit where they're not supposed to sit. They speak while you're speaking. They speak while other students in the class are speaking and trying to answer questions. They're uncooperative. Some of them are over-familiar and ask you personal questions. Perhaps they play mischievous pranks. They don't seem to have the boundaries that they had with the experienced teacher. And the noise. You could hardly hear yourself think, let alone teach. Then something happens. An experienced teacher comes down the passage, perhaps the head of standard or the children's class teacher. They hear the commotion and they step into the class and you watch them because you want to see what they're going to do. Situations like this make your life a misery as a student teacher and you really want to know how to get those classes to behave well. So you watch them. What skills are they going to use? But here's the thing. They don't seem to use any skills. They just step into the classroom and the children keep quiet. It's unbelievable. Children who were truly disruptive a moment before are suddenly sitting there looking respectful and cooperative, like there'd be no trouble at all to teach. This feels unfair to you as a student teacher, I remember this, but it's what happens. Now, I think this has to do with a sense of containment. You see, the class already has a sense of containment with that experienced teacher. They know what they will do about any kind of misbehavior because they have already tested that teacher and they have already found out what they will do. This is unfortunate for you, the student teacher who wants to learn some skills. The problem in observing experienced teachers is that they no longer need to action the skills. So it's hard for a student teacher to learn what to do just by observing them. Whatever this experienced teacher usually does about misbehavior, it works. And the children know this, and so they don't try this teacher. They know that if they misbehave, they will not get away with it. It will cost them something. And they know that this teacher can get them to behave in the way that they need to behave to learn properly. So they have a sense of containment with that experienced teacher, but they don't yet with you, the student teacher. You see, here's the thing. Children never just give you that control for free. You have to show them that you can manage their behavior. So in the beginning, when children have a new teacher, they tend to test them. If you show them that you can manage their behavior, then often they'll be very cooperative. But if you've not yet achieved that sense of containment with them, you're probably having quite a difficult time. Now, people will say to me, but shouldn't children just have this sense in themselves? I mean, if they want to do well in life, shouldn't they just be self-disciplined and contain themselves? I would say that's the point we want to get to. But children don't start out that way. In the beginning, we help them with that sense of containment. So if we think about this in relation to parents, you will see situations where the parent can't really manage the child's behavior. And in these situations, you'll often find the parent walking on eggshells around the child. I think once we start talking about it like this, we can see it quite easily. You can see where the children have a sense of containment or whether they have the sense that they have the power of veto. When they misbehave, when they have a tantrum, the parent doesn't know how to handle them, and the child knows it. As I said earlier, children seem to behave worse when they have a sense that you don't know how to stop them. Whether you're a teacher or whether you are a parent, if you have not yet achieved a sense of containment with the children in your care, you are having quite a difficult time. They are testing you, they are misbehaving, and perhaps they feel they're getting away with it, in which case their behavior just gets worse and worse. The good news is that once you achieve that sense of containment, they will settle down and you'll have a much better time with them and you won't be dealing with the frequency and intensity of negative behavior that you're dealing with now. Don't give up. If you can achieve a sense of containment, then your life is going to get a lot easier quite quickly. Keep watching the Peace Discipline videos because we'll be looking at practical ways to achieve a sense of containment. But in the meantime, you can find information on containing skills on the Peace Discipline website, www.peacediscipline.com. I'm saying this because I know that if you don't have a sense of containment, you'll be feeling like you need help yesterday. So like I say, go to the Peace Discipline website in the meantime and subscribe to this channel and keep watching because we'll be covering this in a lot more detail.